What's up, everybody? My name's Alien, and I'm here to rank all 150 Jokers in Bellatro. There's a lot to get through, so let's dive right into it. Now, I'm going to mostly rank the Jokers based on how well they perform in Antis 1 through 8 and helping you secure wins across all the difficulties. If a Joker only has good uses in Endless, then it's not going to rank very highly unless it's also very useful in Antis 1 through 8. So it's going to be mostly around simply beating the game and not very much around Endless, but I'll try to bring it up if it's important for the Joker. First up, we just got the Joker, plus four multiplier. So obviously it's bad. Uh, it's not good. It doesn't carry for long. However, if you run into it into the shop in the first ante, it's only two bucks, which is worth noting. It's very cheap. And then you can sell it later for a dollar. So it is essentially costs you a dollar. So as long as it doesn't really affect your interest early on, it's probably worth grabbing, weirdly. I think it's a high D, but obviously it just doesn't do much after that point. Yeah, it's 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 kind of weirdly okay. Next up, we could probably do all four of these at once. We have the Greedy, Lusty, Wrathful, and Gluttonous Joker. So played cards with whatever suit give plus four multiplier when scored. They're all quite good, actually, especially early on in those first few antes. Grabbing these is and kind of manipulating your deck to kind of steer towards whichever one you pick up. Uh, is going to help you a lot. So you just want one of these, basically, right? And then you can kind of uh, start uh, changing your deck with tarot cards in order to, say, get a bunch of hearts in the deck so that way you get more multiplier out of them. I do think Diamond is a little bit lower just because Diamonds have a little bit worse synergies later on. And we'll talk about when we get to those Jokers. I think Hearts are pretty strong. Clubs are pretty good. Spades are okay. Something like that. Probably not super important. But yeah, they're weirdly decent Jokers for their price. Next, we got the Jolly Joker, plus 8 multiplier if played hand contains a pair. Easy to activate, but just doesn't hold a lot of weight very late on. I'd probably rather have the other Joker a lot of times, because it, this Joker's just not going to work if you want to play flushes, for instance, or straights. So it's pretty bad a lot of the times for that, but it might help you a little bit early on. I don't think any of these are F-worthy yet. We'll kind of get to those a little bit later. I definitely have some in mind for F. Next, we got the Zany Joker, plus 12 Molt. If played hand contains a three of a kind, three of a kind is even harder to get than a pair. So the condition is not very easy to achieve at this point in time. And I don't think the increase is really worth it. I think it's actually be going to be worse than the Jolly one, honestly. Mad Joker, plus 20 Multiplier. Played hand contains a four of a kind. I mean, you can try to start duplicating cards like that in your deck but it's it's just i don't think the reward is worth uh trying to do that even if you ran into this joker and you already have the ability to play four of a kinds uh super frequently or five of a kinds because it just has to contain it plus 20 just isn't enough probably by that point in time and you probably have better jokers at your disposal at that moment so pretty weak crazy joker plus 12 multiplier played hand contains a straight so the issue with this is that straights are going to be one of the harder uh, hands to uh, skew your deck around at all and plus 12 just is not worth it straights are definitely going to be the hardest to maintain and actually grow uh, early on from the early game into all the way up to anti-8 and just make it so you can actually win by just playing straights it's just not reliable at all and plus 12 just isn't enough roll joker plus 10 multiplier if played hand contains a flush it's okay you know it's all right i mean it's probably still not even c tier but i'd probably put it above maybe right behind the jolly one i mean flushes are pretty strong here in Bellatro. they definitely help secure a lot of wins i think they're okay uh compared to most other you know trying to force certain hands you know Flushes are comfy, you know, like they're the comfy thing to go for in Bellatro for sure. But plus 10 multiplier just isn't a lot. Sly Joker plus 50 chips if played hand contains a pair. It's garbage, really, you know, it's easy to activate, but it's just not a good re reward. 50 chips is just not a lot. Doesn't really help that much early. Doesn't help that much late. So it really just does nothing. In fact, I think that's I think that's F tier worthy, honestly. Wily Joker plus 100 chips if played hand contains a three of a kind. Same thing, basically. It has that. It's just it's just kind of garbage. Maybe it's slightly above because maybe 100 chips is kind of enough when you get later on, but not really, though, still. And then, of course, Clever Joker plus 150 chips if played hand contains a four of a kind. I would actually deem that worse than all the others because reward still not good and it's really hard to activate. So it doesn't it's not going to help you in the first like five or six antis probably and then if you are able to get it so your deck consistently gets four of a kind drawn 
it's there's better jokers much better jokers probably crafty joker plus 80 chips of plate hand contains a flush bad <laughs> just bad bad all around throw it in f i guess it's worth saying that plus chips and bellatro they're often just not that great in comparison to plus multiplier it depends the plasma deck is the one exception to that maybe where you might prefer to take chips especially early on but even then eventually you probably want to swap into multiplier a little bit of multiplier is often going to be worth more than uh, you know a, a reasonable amount of chips you kind of usually need a ton of chips to beat out a little bit of multiplier basically next we got the half joker plus 20 multiplier played hand contains three or fewer cards it's kind of a trap joker i think a lot of times you wouldn't take this into very into the very late game like past anti-5 most of the time even if you're just playing a single high card you usually want to play four other cards to discard so you can draw as many as possible right but it can help carry it early on i think but you're gonna have to transition pretty soon away from that i think this is our first c tier yeah i think i'm pretty happy with that joker stencil this is an interesting one times one molt for each empty joker slot stencil included what it means by that is it does not count itself when adding to your multiplier so if this is the only joker you had you had one out of five slots filled and that one slot was filled by stencil you'd get times five it would say currently times five multiplier um so kind of weirdly worded i think it you it could use a rewording there but it's pretty bad honestly because it's just not that good of an effect if you grab it if you grab it too early it's going to be pretty weak honestly because it's going to be equivalent it's probably going to be worse than like half of these jokers here depending on how your deck's going um and then for later you just want other jokers you know what i mean it's just not that worthwhile i guess it's still worthy of c tier but it's probably going to be super low in c Ah, some good jokers. Here we go. Four fingers, all flushes and straights can be made with four cards. It also enables you to play some wonky uh, straight flushes way more easily. It's probably the best one to play straight flushes. You got some other cards that enable it. But the thing is, straight flushes kind of suck. So I don't know how much that matters. <laughs> They're just too hard to play. But being able to make uh, flushes easier is definitely a big deal, I think and it kind of just allows you to discard a card maybe you don't want either it's just a pretty good all-around joker i think a lot of times both early, early and sometimes all the way through anti-8 i think it's worthy of a but it might be in the lower uh the lower depths of a next we got mime re-trigger all card it held in hand ability so if you have the baron joker if you have a bunch of steel uh, cards you're holding in your hand if you have gold cards those get re-triggered um i think that's about it red seals also will get affected by those things too so if you have a steel card that has a red seal on it uh it'll get triggered three times if you also have mime so one two three times but that's kind of hard to do there's some endless possibilities with this but is it gonna help you win anti-8 most of the time i don't think so i think it's actually gonna be pretty bad 99 percent of the time if you're just trying to score a win there's definitely some quirky things going on with it uh in baron but i think otherwise i think i think it's like a straight up it's, it's straight up like low d you know like i can't really think of a lot of times where i'd want to run into this joker if i'm just trying to score a, a high difficulty win credit card go up to 20 dollars in debt i'm sure we've all seen this joker many many times and we probably all know it's pretty bad it has a little combo with a with a joker called vagabond that we'll run into later and then it's okay but otherwise it's usually just a terrible idea to go into debt in the game you can go 20 dollars in debt and then run into the wraith spectral card which gives you a rare joker and sets your money to zero so you would lose the debt and you can sell the credit card and get back rolling maybe but it's a very specific condition generally you need to build some economy and you need to start getting interest uh most of the time uh, there is a green deck where you earn no interest right so i guess you could consider it i still think it belongs in f tier because it you just wouldn't take it 95 percent of the time you know what i mean uh maybe not worse than all this stuff though yeah sure whatever right there <laughs> ceremonial dagger when blind is selected destroy joker to the right and permanently add double its cell value to this multiplier so double cell value is just the actual cost of the joker so the if you paid six dollars for the joker this bad boy is going to gain six multiplier this thing is trash it's terrible 
So at, uh, I forget what steak it is. Is it purple steak? I think it's purple steak. And the difficulties, if you take that, then you will start running into eternal jokers, which means you cannot sell it or destroy them. And you might say, oh, well, there you go. There's your combo with ceremonial dagger, right? Well, if ceremonial dagger doesn't actually destroy the joker, then you get nothing from it. So it would attack it, but nothing happens. It doesn't gain the multiplier. So this thing is pretty atrocious. You know what I mean? It's just super slow, super slow, super costly. You do have things like Riff Raff, I guess, that spawn jokers, but it's just not worth it. It's really bad, especially for an uncommon that's going to cost you a little bit more. Oh God, where is this thing, you know? Oh my God, I'm a, it's a sea of jokers right now. It's just, there's no conditions. Even if you ran into it in the fur at uh, in like the first round, you still wouldn't want it. The ultimate combo, I guess, would be Riff Raff with it, if you can call it that. You can also think of things like Egg, which uh, gain cell value the longer you hold it, but even then you're still just gonna eventually destroy the egg for the dagger. It's just not worth it, you know? It's it's really bad. It's re I think that honestly belongs there. Banner plus 40 chips for each remaining discard. It's just kind of whatever. Like there's some moments where it's okay. I think it just kind of falls into D tier as a whatever joker. Mystic Summit plus 15 Molt when zero discards are remaining. It's pretty bad. I mean, plus 15 is really low, and then you have to start playing around it. It has like a tiny bit of a synergy with uh, another Joker called Burglar, where it gets rid of your discards, gives you a ton of hands. At which point it's okay, but that's probably about it. I think it's like kind of middle of the road D. Maybe better than Banner, maybe not. I don't know. It's it's pretty it's pretty bleh. Marvel Joker adds one stone card to deck when blind is selected. It's pretty bad. It's pretty atrocious. The problem is stone cards just aren't that good, you know? They really only enable high cards. You add them on to whatever hands you're playing. So if you're playing flushes, they're useless. If you're playing straights, they're useless. Let's see, you have four fingers, I guess. Um, if you're playing high card, you can't combine a bunch of stone cards to form a better hand. You know, you can't play five stone cards to play five of a kind. That's still high card, you know? So the problem is this is crazy slow. You know, it is crazy slow for adding stone cards to your deck. And then on top of that, stone cards are not good. I think it's a straight up F. I'm going to put it above Ceremonial Dagger just because I don't hate it as much. Loyalty card times four multiplier every six hands played. It's weak slash okay. It has some places where it's okay. Like again, Burglar is like a pretty good one. If you're playing a lot of low cards, you know, you can guarantee this probably every other easily. Maybe if you have like a crazy bunch of hands, you do it every single blind even. It's pretty weak overall, but not as bad as many others. I think it's worthy of low C tier in this instance. Yeah, I think so, because it, it could help you in those last few antes, I think. Eight ball, create a planet card. If played hand contains two or more eights. It's bad. It's pretty bad. I think it's F tier. You wouldn't want to build your deck around this, so you, you're not going to go for a bunch of eights in your deck. Um, I guess if you have a Fibonacci, which we'll talk about later, then it could be okay, but I honestly think it's F-worthy otherwise. And planet cards, like, they're just too random, you know? Like, you generally are playing one, maybe two types of hands most of the time. So that's like a like a 2 out of 10 chance of maybe getting something useful out of it. Otherwise, you sell it for a dollar. It's pretty bad. Misprint plus random molt. I think it's plus 0 to 23 or something? It, anywhere between 0 and... Yeah, I think it's 23... Molt, so it's totally random, but honestly, this thing carries pretty hard early on. Yeah, you might get screwed over sometimes, but I do think it's B tier worthy, and I'd probably prefer it over many of these other jokers, especially in the early game, just to kind of help you through, you know? It might take a few hands, but on average, if you're going to be scoring, you know, 11 or 12 multiplier out of it, and there's no conditions, it's not bad. Dusk, retrigger all played cards in final hand of round. So, really good if you have. Somehow, a bunch of glass cards, a bunch of Empress cards, a bunch of Hierophant cards, you know, basically enhanced cards, you know, cards that are having additional effects, red sealed cards, gold sealed cards. Um, but the thing is, it's just not great, you know, a lot of the times. Maybe if you're activating other Jokers like Fibonacci more, it's, you know, that Hail Mary when you'd rather just be clearing the blinds on your first hand or two. If you have to rely on this to win every single round and you're not taking any of that money from not spending the hands, you're probably going to have a rough run, honestly. But I do think it's a cut above some of these other jokers, at least. Does it belong in C tier, though? 
Would I take it over that? Probably not most of the time. It's pretty bad, I think. It'd throw it somewhere right around there. Raised Fist adds double the rank of lowest card held in hand to the multiplier. Be careful with stone cards because it'll actually ruin Raised Fist if, if that's like your lowest card or whatever, I guess. Yeah. Uh, so you got to be careful around that. Uh, it's okay. You know, it'll it, what, another one that will kind of carry early on, kind of like misprint uh, for an ante or two. And after that, you're just going to want to let it go. But you know, I don't mind running into it like half the time compared to a lot of these other jokers, honestly. I think it belongs in a solid B, but a little bit lower. It could go up the 20 multiplier if you play around it real hard, but sometimes that's just too hard to do. All right, I think I missed one. I think I missed Devious Joker plus 100 chips if played hand contains a straight bad just like all their other ones you know straights are even harder than the others i don't know i think i mixed up like these two or something i don't know they're both terrible it's not really worth thinking that hard about <laughs> all right after that we got chaos the clown chaos the clown one free reroll per shop um you wouldn't want to pay for it a lot of times i don't know i kind of found it's okay to snag for a cheap price or get it from a buffoon pack if the rest were bad i mean being able to see like two sets of shops, every shop, it's actually pretty good. Like you just wouldn't spend that money otherwise. You know, it's not like it's saving you money, but it, instead it's enabling you to see more jokers, tarot cards, etc. more so because you just probably wouldn't spend that money otherwise. I think it's kind of like, okay. I think it's maybe even low C. Yeah, I mean, you wouldn't want to want it forever. That's for sure. Um, but I think for the first like five or six antes, it's fine to take up a slot that maybe wouldn't be taken up otherwise. Fibonacci, each played ace, two, three, five, or eight, gives plus eight molt when scored. Really good. Really good. Really strong, as you can imagine. I, um, is it S worthy? I think that uh not quite maybe not quite i'm gonna give it an a a hot possibly the highest a it's obviously just really good especially since aces are worth 11 chips eats each or you can do the eights you know it just fits in a lot of different styles of decks flushes four of a kind even straights you know everything just kind of works with everything steel joker this joker gains 0.25 mult for each steel card in your full deck it's pretty rough you know you just can't really go for that many steel cards when you're trying to win anti-8 alone it's pretty horrendous but even if you only have like four in there for whatever the reason even if you're not running into them that's times two multiplier so it's it's probably c tier worthy i think yeah somewhere around there i think it's kind of just eh. scary face played face cards give plus 30 chips when scored it's okay you know it's kind of fine in fact i think it's b worthy B worthy, pr probably not above the suit ones. It's it's kind of okay. Next, we got abstract. Plus three multiply for each Joker cards you have. It's a good one to fill a slot, right? Or to replace another really bad Joker. So it's plus 15 if you have five slots filled. And there's no other conditions required. So I think it actually kind of ends up being better than a lot of other Jokers. It's probably better than these half the times. It kind of depends on your deck. I mean, I guess then it technically has to be better than Misprint. Is that is that really a high B tier? Eventually you get rid of it, right? But it's kind of just good to fill a slot early on. Delayed gratification. Earn $2 per discard if no discards are used by the end of the round. Um, So you'd want to stop discarding and you'd want to spend your hands in order to preserve your discards and earn more money that way. It's kind of okay. At the higher difficulties, you only get like a couple discards per round. It's brutal. Like you kind of can't really work around it most of the time. You're really struggling. So it's really bad at the higher difficulties. It's okay at the base difficulties. I think it probably deserves... Yeah, since it's pretty bad later on... It's a pretty low D, I'm thinking, you know. Eh, whatever. It's somewhere around there, I think. No, next. We got an interesting one here. Hack. Retrigger each played 2, 3, 4, or 5. You would need to run into hack after you've already formed your deck into this or something, right? Because if you retrigger 2, 3, 4s, and 5s, and they're not enhanced with tarot cards, if they don't have other conditions, if you already have Fibonacci, you know, there you go. But... You'd want to run into hack after already kind of forming your deck for it. So I think it actually ends up being bad a lot of the times. Because re-triggering a 2 that isn't enhanced and doesn't have any other relevant jokers, you just get 2 extra chips. It's it's horrible in that sense, you know what I mean? So you kind of need a deck that's already skewed for hack 
in order for it to work but it has a lot more uses than a lot of these other jokers Ugh. but it's still pretty rough you know it's not even that great with endless you know you'd probably want to go for something else in endless honestly next we got paradolia this one's fairly really interesting all cards are considered face cards so there's really only a few things that this really works with there's something called Midas mask here's one right here business card played face cards have a one and two chance to give two dollars when scored uh so that helps with it I think most of the time this doesn't have a lot of good uses though in fact it probably hurts your deck a lot of times because you got bosses right that disable face cards as an instance but then I guess you could just sell this joker it does have its uses I'll admit though but I think they're pretty few and far between I'm gonna throw her Give me a low C for that bad boy there, I think. Ah, the banana. Grosse Michel. Plus 15 multiplier. One in four chance this card is destroyed at the end of the round. It's really good to carry it for a little while. And then eventually it's going to be gone, right? But it, it'll help uh, kind of perk you up for a while. Plus, it enables seeing, I guess you could call it a tier two of it, which is the Cavendish, which is incredibly strong. Okay, I don't know where it is. It's a very strong one i guess we'll glance at it here times three multiplier one in one thousand chance this card is destroyed at the end of the round so i mean that's a pretty good upside i think you take the banana just a lot of times when you're playing the game truth be told i think i'll put it somewhere around right there yeah next we got even steven played cards with even rank give plus four multipliers so two eight six four two um it's quite strong you know it's probably up there with a lot of these other things you know not too special you know you can't carry it forever so it's just kind of okay odd todd played cards with odd rank give plus 30 chips so ace 9753 it's actually a little worse than even steven for most decks i think um maybe even quite a bit worse i'd probably put it worse than scary face i don't know it does have its uses i'll admit but yeah you could have it for a little while but and plus 30 chipsies it's just not good enough a lot of times scholar played aces gives plus 20 chips a plus four multiplier when scored pretty good since aces are really easy to kind of aim for for duplication process and aces are already worth the most chips just as a card there's not really a lot of other uh high level synergies so scholar plus fibonacci you'll have a pretty good time you can probably get through anti-8 with that if you're able to get a lot more aces into your deck but it is something to kind of aim for for that i think it's okay um i think it still belongs in c tier though because it's so specific but probably in the higher tier for c i think next up we have business card played face cards have one and two chance to give what two dollars when scored you in the early game you want to gain money from something like business card and you want to play a lot of face cards usually because they're worth so many chips right so a 50 50 chance to get two dollars per face card is pretty good it's pretty good for your economy i think and i think you'd grab it when you have a lot of empty joker slots fairly often i'm gonna give it a high c but eventually you do drop it right yeah eventually you drop it next up you got supernova as the number of times poker hand has been played to the multiplier now this kind of has this just really depends on what your other jokers are but it has this sort of sort of anti-synergy with the fact that you typically want to win each round in one hand if possible right this makes you want to play all your hands and the reward is not really worth doing that so in other words if you have supernova it's not worth playing all of your hands just to scale up supernova it's not that good but sometimes it could give you a 10 15 multiplier while you're going but by then you're probably on anti five or six so it's it has its uses but they're they're not it's definitely not amazing i'd probably throw it somewhere in the middle of the seas yeah that makes sense to me ah ride the bus plus one multiplier per consecutive hand played without a scoring face card i kind of consider it worse than supernova face cards you just want to play and this just scales up super slow it's per hand right so again really really slow for scaling and it never really gets anywhere it might i don't know this is actually worse than even supernova supernova you can get in the middle of the run and it does something ride the bus you got to get it early you know what I mean it's pretty bad it's pretty bad throw it down in the D's I think space joker one in four chance to upgrade level of played poker hand 25 percent chance I mean I guess if you got supernova and ride the bus you know there's some other things that you can get that will up the odds of this one in four it'll become 50 50 we'll talk about that later 
but is that a combo you want a lot of the time? Eh, so you'd want to be playing a lot of hands and 25% chance is awfully low. I think it's I think it's in the D's, just somewhere in the middle, honestly. It's just really nothing special. The egg gains three dollars of sale value at the end of round. Weirdly, the egg is usually worth buying because you'll earn the money you spent on it immediately. You gain more interest from the egg than the interest you're losing when you buy the egg. Assuming you have empty slots, so early on it's fine, and then you just sell it when you want to spend all your money. It might just be the very next round, but you'll still have gained a like a dollar profit, I think, usually. So the egg is kind of just okay, you know? Like you don't it doesn't really help you in most other ways, but it's still like fine. I think it's above all these other jokers, weirdly. Feels weird for such a simple joker to go there, but yeah. Ah, burglar. When blind is selected, gain plus three hands, lose all the discards. Really good at the higher difficulties, I think. I mean, it does depend, but it does enable a lot of their cool builds or runs uh, to potentially take place. Plus three hands is a lot, right? I think it's actually pretty amazing, and you'd probably want to take it for most of the time. If you're going big endless, you probably don't. I think big endless requires purple seals a lot of the time to really get somewhere. You probably wouldn't use burglar in that instance but to win anti-8 i think it's really strong i think that might be our first s tier welcome to s tier burglar blackboard times three multi if all cards held in hand are spades or clubs okay so you got like smeared joker and well smeared actually just doesn't affect it um wilds are fine for being held in hand because it counts itself as a spade or a club um interestingly so blackboard is actually pretty okay i think it's okay i think okay is the best i can say for it it is times three multiplier so it's pretty good there right um you can either skew your deck around it but yeah it's not a tier but i think it's a high b pretty decently high b just kind of depends on what your deck's doing i think a bit there runner gains plus 10 chips if played hand contains a straight oh my god it takes so many straights to build this up right it sounds like fun it's a fun joker but it takes so long for it to get anywhere and by then, you'll probably have found a better Joker, right? It's bad. It's bad. Like, there's that other Joker we talked about where you get 100 chips for every straight you play. You'd have to play eight straights for that to get to the equivalent, and then it'll start surpassing it, but you're just not going to want to hold on to it. It's real bad. I'll leave Ceremonial Dagger on the bottom, though, for you. Ice Cream, plus 100 chips, minus 5 chips for every played hand. will actually carry you pretty hard for a while, early maybe even late game i kind of think this is weirdly um might be a i think it's a low a honestly like seeing the ice cream especially early on it's really worth it because you can sell it so it'll end up of costing you like three dollars basically but you sell it when it hits like 50 chips or something like that right don't let it hit zero but you probably couldn't anyway you know what i mean ah ha dna the first hand of round is only one card Add a permanent copy to deck and draw it to hand. It might be difficult at the higher difficulties to make good use of DNA, but my god, it's good. It's good for almost every style of run. It's a it's an endless enabler for sure. You know, you can start duplicating glass cards if you want it. If you get Brainstormer Blueprint, which doubles uh, Joker effects, then it just starts popping off. You know what I mean? It enables you to play four of a kind, five of a kind, flush five, etc. It's a it's a real enabler for most decks, so it has to be S tier. It is it is bang on, baby. Let me tell you, splash. Every played card counts in scoring. It's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. Like I guess you could play high cards, you know, and it'll help you there, kind of. Like if you're struggling to form hands, it might be okay. I think it's F though. I think it's F. You know what I mean? You kind of wind up with it pretty often. But I don't think it really does that much for you, you know? You'd want a lot of enhanced cards for it, and if you're taking Splash, you don't have a lot of enhanced cards. Next is Blue Joker, plus two chips for each remaining card in your deck. So, like, chances are when this thing's kicking in, you probably have, like, it'll be, like, plus 80 to 90 chips a lot of times. So it's actually, it's fine. So why is it worse than Ice Cream, you gotta wonder? You know, good question. I guess because it's worse later on a lot of times, I think. But, um, yeah, I think it's, uh, it's pretty bad. Um, maybe I'm regretting that ice cream placement, but I refuse to change it now. <laughs> Next, we got something terrible trash. It's the worst thing I've ever seen before in my life. The first hand of Rand is a single six. 
destroy and create a spectral card. So we all know spectral cards are really, really strong. They're ridiculously good. Could be good, but half of them are useless a lot of the times. And this thing is just way too particular. It's so bad. You can't even double it because... Let's say you have Brainstorm or Blueprint to double a Joker, right? It doesn't work because there's only one six you're playing to destroy. So even that doesn't work for you. It's terrible. It's the terrible of terribles, honestly. I think it's below Ceremonial Dagger. Oh, man, you're welcome, Ceremonial Dagger. <laughs> you haven't earned it, though. Constellation gains 0.1 multiplier per planet card used. Pretty good. I think it's okay. I think it's okay. Um, the voucher that makes planet cards appear more often in the shop is usually pretty bad. You know, you just don't want to see that many planet cards, but this kind of makes it okay. Um, but even then, just like getting 0.1 multiplier for every two or three dollars you spend, depends if you got clearance sale, depends on a few other things. Plus, a lot of times you're going to be opening celestial packs anyway. I think it's pretty decent. It's pretty okay. I think it deserves A, but it's not by a lot, to be honest. I don't think it's by a lot. Hiker, every played card permanently gains plus four chips when scored. I like Hiker for some reason, and I don't know why. It's just like, so when you give cards the bonus chips from this, right? The plus four chips, even when you sell Hiker, they stick around. But the thing is, it's just, it's so little. <laughs> I think I, I think to myself like, man, it's just permanent value. You know, you can't lose. You know what I mean? But it, the truth is, it's just not good. I think it's pretty low in like the C's or something like that, unfortunately. Then you got Faceless Joker, earn $5 if three or more face cards are discarded at the same time. It's a pretty dangerous one, but it's a lot of money, you gotta admit. You probably only go for it like once per round, and at higher difficulties, it's gonna be probably near impossible to use your discards for this. I still think it's like okay in terms of economy, though. Let's put it right below the egg. I think that's pretty fair. Oh god, this thing. Green Joker, plus one multiplier per hand played, minus one multiplier per discard. Another one that scales for each hand you play. So it probably deserves to be placed somewhere around there, but it's even worse than those ones a lot of times, like Supernova, right? Because you just lose it. You know, you just lose it. You just don't want to be playing a ton of hands most of the time. Sometimes you do, but for the most part, that's just not really what's going on. I think this bad boy is a pretty solid F right before uh, Ceremonial Dagger. I think I'm going to give it <laughs> for that because I guess there might be a use or two, you know? Superposition, create a tarot card if poker hand contains an ace and a straight. Oh, God, we're really in the dredges now, let me tell you. It's terrible. You know, straights are tough to make. It's even tougher to make when if they want to ace with it. You'd have to have some other utility jokers, as I call them, to form the straights more easily. And then this is also a utility joker because it just gives you tarot cards. So chances are you're just going to wind up with way too much utility and not enough actual points, and you're just going to end up dead. You know what I'm saying? To-do list, earn $5 if Poker Hand is a four of a kind. Uh, Poker Hand changes on every payout. I don't know why the default is four of a kind, by the way. So it could be any hand when you pick it up. You wouldn't want to pick it up if it's a tough hand to play, that's for sure. But I, I've found that a lot of times it's worth grabbing to-do lists as long as the first hand is easy. And even if you only get like two plays out of it, that's 10 bucks you wouldn't have had. You know, maybe like, maybe it turns out to only be $8, but it's pretty solid early on. I think it's okay for economy again. I would put it maybe not above faceless, but pretty close to it. I like how all the economy jokers are right there. You know what I mean? But yeah, I think it's all right. Cavendish times three multiplier, one in 1,000 chances. Card is destroyed at the end of the round. But you have to have gone through the Gras Michel in order to get it. Does that mean it should get a lower rank because it's harder to see this joker? I don't think so. It's more about just if that Joker appears, right? Like, do you want that Joker? Oh, the answer is 100% yes. I mean, obviously, it's really, really good, right? You just wouldn't want to play around. Like, you wouldn't want to take the banana and hope that it destroys itself on the off chance of Cavendish appearing, I guess, is the way I'm thinking about it. You wouldn't take the, the, the first banana just to try to get this banana, I guess. But obviously, times three multiplier, very good. Card sharp, times three multiplier, played. Poker hand has already been played this round. I think it's actually pretty good. It enables high card plays pretty well too, right? Uh, you just need a lot of mult from other sources too. I think it's actually quite good. Um, so your first hand's gonna stink, but your second hand's gonna go go big. Is it A worthy? I think it's a low A. 
I think it's a low A. Give me a low A on card sharp. I think it's pretty decent. Red card gains plus three multiplier when any booster pack is skipped. So that's standard packs. That's buffoon packs. That's tarot card packs. That is all. It's all the different packs, including if you skip to open a pack as well. If you get a mega pack, which is the one that lets you pick two items from it, you can take one item, then skip the second one to get bonus on the red card. And it's rough. It scales better than a lot of other things, but you're spending a lot of money to try to get it up there. But it's it's okay, I'll acknowledge. You know, I'll, I'd probably have it more often than Hiker, I think, personally. Madness. When blind is selected, gain 0.5 multiplier and destroy a random joker currently times one. Oh boy. So it has more uses at the higher difficulties, interestingly, right? because you can run into eternal jokers, which cannot be destroyed, which means if you have a bunch of eternal jokers, you can take madness and there's no there's no downside. At the base difficulty, you can have a run where you just have madness and you could potentially win and you focus on just tarot cards and celestial packs. But in between there, it's pretty rough. You just don't take it 95% of the time. It has like its own niche little fun run to itself. But obviously, you're just not going to want it the vast majority of the times. Does that mean I'm throwing it an F? I think that means it's a high F. You know, you everyone does their one madness run and then you put it down forever is the way I feel. Square Joker gains plus four chips if played hand has exactly four cards. It's terrible. It's trash. It's so bad. Just throw it down there at the bottom of the pit with the rest of them. It's so bad. You know, you can't get it up high enough. It doesn't scale quickly enough. If Poker Hand is a straight flush, create a random spectral card. Ugh. The thing is, like, straight flush is just so hard to make happen. I mean, I guess if you got them going on, then this would be okay. But the problem is to get straight flushes to happen reliably, you probably need some other utility jokers like four fingers, right? So you can't really afford another joker slot that gives you utility like this thing. It's an F. It's an F. Let me tell you, that, that thing's an F. I don't even know where it goes in F, but it's pretty bad, I think. Riff Raff, when blind is selected, create two common jokers. Really strong... Obviously, early on, this is also a common. If this was anything but common, it would probably be worse in a lot of ways, right? Because you just you'd run into it when you uh, when you are skipping or later on when you can spend rolls. It's really strong early on for a lot of runs, right? Just to fill your Joker slots, you can get negative Jokers from it too. Believe it or not, you can really milk that bad boy. You can get negative Jokers. You can get foiled Jokers. Um, and then, of course, you can just sell them. Of course, they have to be common, right? And you need the room for it, so it's a bit dangerous. But if you have a couple other okay jokers in your possession that are carrying you, I think it's actually pretty good. I think it's pretty good. Vampire gains 0.2 malt per enhanced card played, removes card enhancement. Important thing to note about Vampire is per card played, not scored. So if you just play a card, even if it's not getting scored, the Vampire will, you know, suck the enhancement off of it. I think it's actually pretty good, but only sometimes. It really depends. You don't want two vampires because uh, it just doesn't work. There is actually just like a bug where it just straight up doesn't work if you got two vampires going on. Uh, the second vampire won't suck, basically. So vampire, it has its uses. I think it's actually okay. It's terrible for endless, as you can imagine, if you want to go like super big endless, you know? Because endless usually means you're going for glass or lucky or steel or something like that. I guess it's not the worst, but I think it's um I think it's kind of like a C tierish, you know, somewhere under definitely above the steel. I think I can say, um maybe if it's, uh, you know what, give it a low B, give the vampire a low B. I'm gonna say on that one. Ah, shortcut allows traits to be made with gaps of one rank two, three, five, seven, eight. It's really interesting. It's a mind melter. This one, it this is what makes traits kind of fun. I think in a lot of ways, if you have this and four fingers, but the problem again comes down to if you have this and four fingers you can get straight flushes but it's costing you two joker slots to get those straight flushes so is it worth it you know what i mean and you can never really change that you're stuck with those jokers forever if you really go hard on the straight flushes you know what i mean but it does enable straights to get played so i think it's kind of a fun joker i don't think it's a good joker though it's weird that four fingers is going to be so high and this is going to be so low but i think it's fair the uh, throw her a low C, I think, for that. Hologram gains 0.25 multiplier per playing card added to your deck. Pretty good. You know, it's it's okay. It does require you to kind of muddy up your deck. 
Um, so it's not going to be as good as like Constellation, I think. It does scale a bit faster. If you have like DNA, that works, baby. That works, you know what I mean? Um, it's... I don't know. It's okay. 0.25 is pretty good, I guess, at the end of the day. So if you have DNA, you're having a good time. If you have like that weird marble joker that adds stone cards to your deck, I guess you're having an okay time too. Um, you are throwing cards into your deck. It, removing cards does not hurt it, by the way. I think it's above Vampire, at least. But not by much, honestly. I don't think you'd take it a lot of the times. Vagabond, create a tarot card if hand is played with $3 or less. So tarot cards are incredibly powerful in Bellatro because they enable you to manipulate your deck and to get hands that you want to play. And that's thus making it an actual deck builder, you know what I mean? So tarot cards are incredibly good. And Vagabond incentivizes you to just spend your money. So it kind of just works out in a lot of ways. It kind of hurts your ability to look and get other jokers a lot of times, but getting a bunch of tarot cards will able will make it so that you can gain money in other ways oftentimes. This is easily an S tier. In fact, I think it goes above Burglar. It's not by a lot though, I think. Next, we got the Baron. Each king held in hand gives 1.5 mult. It's just very specific, right? I think 99% of the time you run into Baron, you don't take it. It has some big endless possibilities, but for winning anti-8, it just, it just, it just doesn't do enough. You know what I mean? It's kind of interesting like that. So it, it, it could help you a lot if you're going into anti 10, 11, 12, 13, but otherwise it's bad. It's going to be bad most of the time. You know what I mean? It's probably right there with mime because you need, you kind of need Baron for mime to work. So there you go. Honestly. Yeah, I know that sounds atrocious for Baron, but I think that's true. Flat 9 earned $1 for each 9 in your full deck at the end of the round. So you start off with obviously $4 passive income. You know what I mean? I heard that's good. Um, so it's it's good. It's a better economy joker than probably a lot of these other ones. So maybe a low B for that one. Yeah, I think it's better than a lot of the other economy ones. Throw it right there. Somewhere around there. Well done, Cloud9. Rocket earned $1 end of round. Gains $2 when boss blind is defeated. Depends when you get it, right? It depends when you get it, how open you are to your slots. The earlier, the better for this. You get it in anti one, baby, you're cruising. You know what I mean? You're gonna have, you're gonna be swimming in cash by the end. So, um, it's kind of a tough one because once you hit like anti five or six, you're probably not gonna want to take it. You know what I mean? But I think you take it a lot of the times otherwise. So I guess in terms of economy, I think I like it a little better than Cloud Nine, at least not by a ton though. Obelisk times a two times 0.2 multiplier per consecutive hand played without playing your most played poker hand. So let's say you've played 10 flushes. That's your most played poker hand. Let's play you played zero of everything else. You take obelisk. You just never play a flush again. You try to play 10 of every single other hand to scale it up and you might be okay. It's rough. Um, I think it actually has some pretty big potential, but it's, it's just such a, it's such a tough one to use. You know what I mean? Because typically, if you play 10 flushes and nothing else, it's kind of hard to just stop. You know what I mean? You would need to have a lot of other things pushing you forward in order to build up Obelisk. So you have to be like really far ahead in score to take the Obelisk, and maybe then that will carry you into the later game. But it's a rare, so you're just not going to run into it that often. I think I avoid Obelisk pretty often, but I think it has more uses than a lot of these other Jokers, I'll say at least. Let's give it a low C. I just think you skip it most of the time, you know? Midas Mask. All face cards become gold cards when played. Very specific, right? But it does kind of work. There's that Paradolia one, which all cards become face cards. This can be kind of an economy joker a little bit. I think I got to pick up the pace here. I think it's just kind of okay. I think it's lower than a lot of these other economy jokers. Put it next to Paradolia because that's how you'd actually be able to use it, right? Luchador, sell this card to disable the current boss blind. It's never there when you need it, and it's always there when you don't need it. You know what I mean? You don't really want to waste a joker slot on it. It's just kind of whatever. I'm going to throw it in in the Ds, honestly. And yeah, I mean, I've had it save me like once. You know what? Put it in low D, I think. It's not quite F. It's not quite that worthy, I think. Photograph, first played face card. Gives times to multiplier when scored. This one's kind of a weird one, so it triggers on your first face card. So any other jokers that give you multiplier are probably going to be triggering after photograph. 
So it's based on your base multiplier, which is usually going to be pretty low, especially early on. And then even and then later on, you're probably just getting more out of other jokers. So it's just kind of, eh. you know, you might have it hold a slot for a little while. I'm kind of thinking, you know, like maybe it's a high D. Maybe it's a cut above the plain old joker. Man, that feels weird, huh? All right, so what's next? Gift card, add $1 of sale value to every Joker consumable card at the end of the round. It's pretty terrible. <laughs> it's god awful. What does it synergize with? Like, egg? Not really. Ceremonial dagger? Not really, right? Swashbuckler? Did we even go over Swashbuckler? I don't see Swashbuckler yet. I mean, I guess we'll get the Swashbuckler, but it's bad. It's really bad. I think that's an F. That's gonna have to be an F. Madness is definitely better than it though, trust me. <laughs> Turtle Bean plus five hand side re reduces by one every round. It's okay. It, it, it takes your places for a little while. I think it's okay. It can help uh, carry you forward and get some hands through. I think I can throw it somewhere in like the mid C, but the thing is you do eventually sell it. That's the, that's the thing. Yeah, sure. Somewhere around there. It's just kind of okay. Helps carry you through for a few rounds. You know what I mean? Erosion plus four multiplier for each card below 52 in your full deck. Now, you might be thinking of the abandoned deck right now, which uh, starts with 40 cards in it. It doesn't work. Erosion changes itself so that it says 40 cards when you play the abandoned deck. So rest in peace. I, th I assume it just sets itself to whatever the base amount of cards is for the deck you're playing. Uh, so it's... Uh, eh, eh? The thing is, you're probably not going to be below the base amount until pretty later on but it's still okay a lot of the times you can it can be pretty decent i think i think it's a b i think it's a b most of the time i'm trying to think like most of the time where would i take it and yeah i think it would be okay in those instances you know reserve parking each face card held in hand has a one in two chance to give a dollar this is one of the weaker economy ones i'm gonna say you know what I mean? Maybe it's time to zoom out. You know what I'm, you know? Ah, uh, yeah, there we go. Yeah, this is definitely one of the weaker economy ones. Holding face cards in your hand and you have to win the round. Wait, you have to win the round? I don't even remember now. Or is it when you, yeah, I think it's when you're winning the round. It's pretty bad. I think it's bad. Put it above Baron, but yeah, you know, it's pretty terrible. Mail and rebate earn $3 for each discarded ace. Rank changes every round. It's a decent one. It's better than a lot of the other ones. Um, to-do list, though? Maybe. I don't know. It's close. It's up there. It's okay. I think it's decent. Shoot the moon. Earn an extra dollar of interest for every five dollars you have at the end of the round. This needs a reword because it, it just doubles your potential interest, basically. So if your interest is capped at five dollars right now, it goes to ten. If your interest is capped as ten dollars, it goes to twenty. So it does not go forever. It does not go to the moon like it claims. You know, it doubles your potential interest. So it's actually pretty bad then, I think. Especially compared to a lot of these other ones, right? Like early on, like, ugh. Like a lot of these enable you to get interest. This only gains you more interest, so you have to already have a lot of interest. Ugh. It's, it's just, it's just kind of, it's pretty weak. Is it worth some reserve parking? Maybe not, but it's pretty close, I'm going to say. Hallucination. One in two chance to create a tarot card when any booster pack is opened. It's fine to carry early on, I think. I think it's fine to carry early on. It does have a big synergy with oops all sixes. A lot of these things do. Doubles all listed probabilities. So this would become a two and two chance. So 100% chance to get a tarot card every time you open a booster pack. I think it's okay. It's fine. But that's probably about it. Um, hmm. I'm going to say very low C on that thing. I think it's okay, though. Fortune Teller, plus one multiplier per tarot card used this run. Obviously, this can get very high. Um, I think you do wind up taking Fortune Teller pretty often. Uh, just because, you know, even if it's not very high the moment you take it, you know it will get higher or should get higher, right? Um, yeah, I think it's, I think it's, I think you take it a lot to get your anti-8 wins pretty often. Is it A tier? I don't think it's A tier. I don't think it's A tier. Um... Do I think it's A tier? I think it's low A. Give me a low A on it. Juggler, plus one hand size. It's fine. You know, it's fine. I think it, yeah, it's just sort of like a B thing. You know what I mean? It's fine. Drunkard, plus one discard. Also fine. Not quite as good as hand size, I think. It kind of depends. It could be. 
It could be. It kind of depends what's going on. If you're using, if you got purple seals in your deck, it could do a little bit more. You know what I mean? Actually, you know, I kind of convinced myself. I know this was really important, right? Boom. Better than the juggler. There you go. Stone Joker. This Joker gains plus 25 chips for each stone card in your full deck. Ugh. Horrible. So A, stone cards already give you a ton of chips when you're playing them. So you probably have a chip bloated deck if you have a bunch of stone cards in it. And this thing just gives you more chips? More? If this gave multiplier, like plus five multiplier per stone card, oh my god. That would actually enable a potential big stone card run that I think could be fun. But as is, put it next to the other stone joker one. It's bad. It's bad. Don't take it. Don't take it. Golden joker earned four dollars at the end of the round. It's fine, obviously. Probably better, uh, worse than a lot of these other economy jokers. But it, it's okay. You know what I'm saying? Lucky Cat gains 0.2 multiplier each time a lucky card successfully triggers. I think it's one of the worst one of these types of jokers, just because it's hard to get a lot of lucky plays. I think it actually has decent potential when going into endless, like anti's 9, 10, 11, 12. And then eventually it falls off again, you know? I think it has some potential there, but you probably don't want it over a lot of other things. And to take it to before beating anti-8, I don't think you would. I, I don't think you would. I think it's probably in D tier. Sorry, kitty cat. You know, put it below hack, because I think I'd probably prefer hack most of the time. Baseball card. Uncommon jokers each give times 1.5 molt. So this basically means all your uncommons act as if they have polychrome on them. Possibly again, you know, an additional polychrome if they already have it. So when those jokers are going in their own order, they will times 1.5. It the 1.5 doesn't trigger when the joke order hits baseball card. It's on each individual uncommon. So baseball card, pretty good. You know, that's a pretty good joker right there, I'm going to say. That's pretty solid. I think that's A tier. I don't think it's S tier. I don't think it's S tier. I think it's a pretty high A. You'd probably take it pretty often. I'm thinking. Bull, plus two chips for each dollar you have. Bad. Pretty bad. Pretty terrible. I'm going to say D. Maybe even F. It's just not enough chips. You know what I mean? And you don't end up with a lot of money. Yeah, actually, I think it's F. Throw it in the Fs. I don't know. Somewhere around there. You know what I mean? Diet Cola, sell this card to create a free double tag. Uh, you know... So double tag means you get double on your next skip. Um, essentially. You know... It's all right. No, it's not. It's pretty bad, I think. I guess if you have an empty Joker slot, you're swimming in cash, you buy and sell this, it costs you like $3 to buy and sell it, I think. So is it worth $3 to get a double tag? You need the empty Joker slot is the main problem for it. I'd say for that. Um, I think it's D. I think it's D. It's just not very useful most of the time. Training card at first. A discard of round is only one card. Destroy it and earn $3. Amazing for endless to kind of form your deck, right? Narrow it down. D pretty strong even uh, at the lower difficulties. At higher difficulties, when you only have two discards, it's probably a death sentence to try to make use of it. You know what I mean? I think it's... Um, I think it ha definitely has some decent uses. I think it's a bit of a trap and probably gets it killed very often to have to waste a discard uh, on destroying a card especially at the higher difficulties, but it has its uses in its other in the other places. So I think it deserves some kind of placement here. Yeah, give it a mid C. It's kind of this weird juxtaposition between has uses here, but no uses there, etc. Flash card plus two mult per reroll in the shop. This is really hard to get going, I've realized. Plus two just isn't enough. So you need a ton of money. And if you have a ton of money to spend to be rerolling the shop, you know, then you probably can do better than flash card. If you have the reroll discount vouchers going, you're probably pretty late in the game. And again, it's probably a better joker than flash card. I think that has to scale up faster or something in order for it to be pretty decent. That's my that's what I'm imagining. But it is better than a lot of these other jokers, I'm gonna say. Yeah, right behind dusk sounds alright for me. Popcorn plus 20 multiplier minus four multi per round played. It'll save your ass a lot of times, let me tell you. That thing will save your ass uh, a lot of the times. You'll take it a lot very early on, and then you just sell it before it destroys itself. Gains plus two mult if played hand contains a two pair. I want, I want, I want the spare trousers to be good, but they're not good. Oopsie. But they're not good. They're just not. You know, I've tried so hard. 
I tried so hard, but it, it, it turns out constantly playing two pairs is kind of hard to do. And it's another thing that scales up with how many hands you play. It's pretty bad. I'll put it above the Baron though. Don't worry. Ancient Joker. Each played card with Spade Suit gives 1.5 Molt when scored. Times 1.5 Molt when scored. So this is truly random. It chooses between one of the four suits. It doesn't matter what your deck looks like. It just chooses one of those four suits uh, to pick from. So I guess in an ideal situation, you'd be playing a bunch of wild cards all the time, right? Or at least you'd be playing normal straights and you'd have a variety of suits. It's bad. It's pretty bad. It's just not reliable at all. I think it belongs in F. I think it belongs pretty low in F too, honestly. Ramen times two molt loses 0 0.01 per card discarded. It's fine. It'll carry you for a little while. It'll help you out. I think this will help you out. You don't keep it forever, but you probably grab it from time to time to help you. You know what I mean? I'm going to throw that bad boy somewhere. Is it C? You know what? I think it's B. I think it's B. Put it low B, I'm going to say now. Now we're really getting into it. Walkie talkie. Each played 10 or 4. Gives plus 10 chips, plus 4 multi when scored. I think in the early game, it's pretty decent to just enable some of your cards to actually do something, you know? It's okay. But it's only okay at best, right? 10s and 4s, right? The I mean, 10s you'd want to be playing half the time anyway is one way of looking at it, right? Just because they have a higher chip count. But otherwise, eh. You know? I think it's... Is it that much worse than the suit ones? Probably not. Give it a very low B, I think, for that. Self search. Retrigger all cards played for the next 10 hands. It's not going to last long. It could do something for you in Endless. It could save you if you get it in like Anthe 7, and it just helps carry you through to the end. So it has its uses, but you're not. I don't think you're picking it up. Super, it's, it's really bad early on when you don't have a lot of on on score effects, you know what I mean? So retriggering doesn't do a whole lot for you. It's pretty bad. Don't worry, we'll leave it above Baron there. Castle, this Joker gains plus three chips per discarded suit. Suit changes every round. Um, so this does look at your deck. Uh, these, these Jokers, most of these Jokers beside Agent do actually look at your deck and they will pick a card at random, one of the 52 or however many cards you have in your deck, right? and it will set itself to that. So if you have only spades in the deck, you can get pretty high chips. But the problem is, it takes forever to scale up, and by that time, you just don't need plus chips. It's pretty bad. It's bad. Uh, worse than Seltzer? Mm, not worse than Seltzer, don't worry. Smiley face played face cards give plus four multiplier when scored. Decent, you wanna play face cards anyway early on, right? It's pretty good, it's not bad. Um, I think it's above a lot of this stuff. Yeah, I think I'll throw it right there. Yeah, right there, I'm going to say. Campfire, this Joker gains 0.5 molt for each card sold. Resets when boss bind is defeated. So that includes consumables and Jokers. So you can buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell. So you need a lot of economy to get something out of this. And then it resets and you have to do it all over again. Eh, to beat Anti-8, like... uh I just don't think you're going to have a good time with this very often. It's not the worst. I, I, I definitely take it over Obelisk. Um, I don't think it's better than trading card when I'm looking at things here. But it could help you get through those those last uh, couple of antes is what I'm thinking there. Page 8. Golden ticket played gold cards earn $3 when scored. It's just not worth a joker slot at all. There are some conditions with like Midas Mask and stuff. But ugh, otherwise, it's, it's just going to be useless most of the time. The road in the F's, baby. Uh, but don't worry, it's worse than madness. <laughs> Mr. Bones prevents death if chips scored are at least 25% of required chips, then it self-destructs. I mean, unless you're on the last ante and you know you can get 25%, this thing is just dead in the water like all the time, you know what I mean? It's not quite as bad as some of the others, probably. I don't know. It kind of is, though, you know? It cut, where'd it go? I don't know. It went into the abyss. Okay. Oh, I found it. It kind of is worse because you just you wouldn't pick it up most of the time. You know what I'm saying? Man, we got like nothing in the S tier, so I'm realizing. <laughs> Acrobat times three molt on final hand of round. So kind of similar to Dusk. I kind of find it... So Dusk is better for Endless, but I think this is better for winning anti-8 if that's what you're trying to do. So I think it's a little bit better, but not much. It's not great. I'm going to say not great. Is, is that where did I put Dusk? I don't even remember. Oh, God. Where did it go? 
Hmm. I didn't put that bad boy in B, did I? I don't remember putting it in B. I don't see it. So how do I just feel about this on its own? Um, I think it's C. I think it's kind of a low C. Put it above Obelisk, though. That's my that's my benchmark for it. That's my benchmark right there. Okay, up next, we got Sock and Buskin. Amazing for Endless. Enables a lot of crazy Endless combinations. Otherwise, it's okay. So, again, we're not ranking this on how good something does in Endless. It's just kind of okay, I think, otherwise. You know, it kind of depends what else you got going on in the deck. But, you know, enables things like Smiley Face, potentially... Um, I can't think of anything else off the top of my head, but re-triggering cards can be quite strong especially in Endless, not quite as much in just winning anti-8, but nevertheless, it definitely deserves to be in B. I'm going to say even A. I'm going to say it belongs in A tier. Yeah, I think it I think it do. I think it do. Swashbuckler. As a sale value of all own jokers left of this card to its multiplier. It's pretty... Well, so it's okay. It's okay early on. You know, it, it helps you out. You know, you just... it has It has to go before the end, you know? I'm sorry. So it seems like there's a bunch of other jokers like gift card that were built for Swashbuckler, but it just doesn't work, you know? And the egg, it just takes up way too much. You know what I mean? But you do end up taking it kind of like misprint and abstract. I think you end up taking it surprisingly often for those purposes to kind of survive in the early game. Troubadour, plus two hand size, minus one hands per round. Eh, it's pretty bad, I think. I, I don't like it, to be honest. I don't like it. I mean, you can think about steel cards here and everything, but I don't think it's worth thinking about, honestly. You know, it disables a lot of builds that might require you to play a lot of hands to scale up. Um, I don't know. I think it has its uses, but I don't, I certainly think it's far from amazing. I think it belongs in C, but not by, not by a lot, you know? Certificate of Authority. Oh, of Authenticity, even. When round begins, add a random playing card with a random seal to your hand. Ooh. The seals are really strong in the game. You know, so the seals like red seals, re-triggers the card. Gold seal gives you three bucks when you play the card. Seals are very good. So you'd want to take this for a little while, if at all. But then you ditch it pretty soon after that. I'm going to say... Give it, a, give it the lowest D. It just barely beat out F. Honest. It barely beat it out. Smear Joker. Hearts and Diamonds count as the same suit. Spades and Clubs count as the same suit. Really good. Enables flushes obviously very easily. Maybe it will help you get straight flushes if that's what you're going for. It's very painful for a lot of bosses though, so you got to be careful with it. You might have to sell it at a boss or something like that. So if you're relying too much on it, you might wind up dead because of it, honestly. Because if the boss is disabling hearts, there go your diamonds too, you know what I mean? Nevertheless, it helps you get by quite a bit it's def i think it belongs in a but not by a whole lot um not by a whole lot again i'm i'm i'm, I'm a flush man so what can i tell you throwback times 0.25 molt for each blind skipped this run uh you're just not usually skipping that much you know what i mean i think on the average run for me i'm probably skipping like three or four maybe for a voucher if i have a lot of cash for negative jokers Maybe in the first couple of antis for various things, you know. So I think this never really gets that high. You can't really build that much around it. But it's kind of okay. It's kind of okay a lot of times, you know. I think it belongs. Give it a C. Better than trading card? Nah. Better than campfire? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Hanging Chad, retrigger first played card used in scoring. Pretty bad. Might have a moment here and there. Pretty bad. Even in the early game. It's bad. It's bad. It's really bad. Yeah, but it's worse than Green Joke? Not worse than Green Joke. No way. That's impossible. Rough Gem. Play cards with Diamond Suit. Earn $1 when scored. These four are all about the different suits here. Dollar per Diamond. It's the worst one of the four, unfortunately. Um, Because if you are able to play, let's say, Diamond Flushes reliably, at that point, you probably already have economy from other things. So $5 per hand. And a lot of times you're ending... You're ending each round in one, maybe two hands. It's just not quite that much. So I think it's worse than a lot of the other economy ones, honestly. Just because your deck has to be built around it. And then it's hard to get those diamonds to score higher because they, we don't have these other jokers that are coming up. 
We got Bloodstone. One in three chance for played cards with Heart Suit to give times two molts when scored. Really powerful effect. Super risky though, right? So pretty strong endless potential here with it, as you can imagine here. Because multiplying your multiplier, and then you red seal, and then you glass. So this thing triggers three, four times potentially on, a, on each heart card you're playing. Really strong endless. Is it going to do that much for you if you're playing heart flushes up to anti-8? I think it'll do pretty well. I think it'll do pretty well. Even if you just hit it once. It's when they're scoring, though. Hmm. It's when they're scoring. Give it a high B. I think high B is fair. Arrowhead played cards with spade suit. Give plus 50 chips unscored. So if you're going flushes, which a lot of times I am at least, uh, and you got a lot of spades in the deck, how badly do you want this? It's okay. It's better than rough gem, I think. It, it it's it's something, I think. It's a decent amount of chips. Is it is it enough though? It's 250 at the most, right? No. It's actually bad. <laughs> there, I'm going to say it. it has no endless potential whatsoever. Um it's actually pretty bad to be honest. So I actually yeah, I'd rather probably go rough gem. Well, actually for winning anti-8, I don't know. That's tough. That's tough. I'm going to put it Let's put it uh, above Obelisk. There, perfect. Onyx Agate played cards with Club Suit. Give plus eight multiplier and score. Way better than all those. Obviously, very strong. Very strong. So a good reason to specifically go for uh, clubs, really. I'm going to put it all the way above all of that. Put it above baseball. Oh, above baseball. Above baseball. Thank you very much. Glass Joker gains 0.5 mult for every glass card that is destroyed. 0.5 is a lot. So, a little bit of endless potential here, obviously. Is it going to help you win anti-8? Most of the time, no, right? So, when you get this offered this, you would need to already have several glass cards in the deck to even consider it. And then you kind of need them to break. Now, if you destroy a class card with Hanged Man, for instance, then this will actually go up. It counts as breaking the glass. So, it has its uses, but I think it's less than a lot of others. I think it is kind of balanced pretty well, though, in terms of the numbers. But I'd probably take Vampire before it a lot of the times, because Vampire is just way more reliable, you know what I mean? Joe Man, Joker, Tarot, Planet, and Spectral cards may appear multiple times. Man, this thing is like a give and take, you know? Because it kind of ruins Celestial Packs, where you just might get a bunch of, like, Plutos offered. You know, it's really bad early on. It has huge endless potential to get a lot of, say, Blueprints. You know what I mean? Um, but otherwise... I think you don't want it if you're just trying to beat anti-8 99% of the time. It's just rolling the dice, you know what I mean? Is it F tier? I think it actually is, just beating anti-8. I don't think you want it. In fact, I think it's an active detriment for most runs out there, I'm going to say, you know? Flower Pot, times 3 mult if played hand has a scoring diamond, club, heart, and spade. Really hard to activate, huh? So what's your best case scenario? Bunch of wild cards? You're playing a straight with all four suits. It's tough. It's tough, baby. It's tough. I guess it has a, 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 a potential. You know what I mean? But I think that's a D. I'm pretty sure that's going to have to be a D right there. What do we got next? Ah, oh, blueprint. I mean, come on. Copies ability of Joker to the right. Boom. You just need one good Joker and a blueprint. You got two good Jokers right there. Obviously, S tier. Now, how can a Joker that copies other Jokers be above... DNA because you'd always want blueprint right so you don't always want DNA necessarily you probably always want DNA. you almost always want DNA but yeah blueprint even if you don't have a, an amazing joker right now you, you're copying your best joker it doesn't work for everything it does work on itself so if you have multiple blueprints it works you can whoop, 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 you know uh, amazing endless potential just really good this joker gains plus eight chips when each plate at two is scored the Wii joker now, this scaling is kind of done better than a lot of the other chip jokers, but it does require you to go specifically into twos uh, for your deck, which is tough. So it has a tiny bit of endless potential. You're not going to get crazy far, though, that's for sure, but it could probably help you get through, like, anti-12. It's good for one fun run, but otherwise, like, it's too difficult to scale up, and, yeah, it doesn't really make sense. I think um, it's better than a lot of this other stuff, though. I think a lot of times. Yeah, but it's definitely it's definitely D tier. Mary Andy. Plus three discards, minus one hand size. Oh, so worth it. You know what I mean? It's so worth it. Trust me when I say it is so worth it. 
plus three discards really powerful if you have purple seals in the deck oh my god oh my god it's so strong you know what i mean is it s is it s it just also suits every single deck right when you think about it it suits every deck essentially i guess not a steel deck you know what i mean but that those decks practically don't exist i'm gonna give it a low s mary andy let's go baby Ah, oops, all sixes. Doubles, all listed probabilities. We mentioned this. One in three goes to two in three chances. Do I have like a nearby thing we can point out here for for odds? Uh, not that I can see very quickly. Yeah, so it's so it helps lucky, for instance, right? All of your lucky cards will go two and five chance for plus 20 multiplier, two and 15 chance to get to the $20, right? Um... It has its uses, but they're very particular, but surprisingly common at the same time. I think it belongs in B, because you'd want to take it with something like business card, one in two chance to get some money. So that becomes a 100% chance. Same thing with hallucination, which spawns tarot cards, right? I think it actually has more uses than a lot of these other ones. Um, put it right around there, I'm going to say. The idol, each played ace of spades, gives times two multiple scored card changes every round complete just chooses one random card in your deck and tells you you have to play that card so if you only have aces of spades in your deck guess what it will always land on ace of spades so huge endless potential but otherwise just to win it's the eight this thing is trash it's so bad you're never going to get your deck that narrow and that formed by anti eight to win so this is a weird thing where this is s tier when you want to go endless and it is totally f tier otherwise 100 percent, it is really bad you were just gambling really big on that seeing double time suit multi if played hand has a scoring club card and a scoring card of any other suit it's pretty good i think it's actually pretty good oopsie i think it's uh, decent you know what i mean it's one of the harder ones to unlock i believe you got to play like four or seven of clubs or something like that is it better than bloodstone i'm gonna say it's better than bloodstone for the average run you know it kind of just depends on your deck what you're playing if you end up playing like a lot of four of a kinds, full houses, a bit tough to go, five of a kind, etc. I think it kind of works, you know? Matador, earn $8 if played hand triggers the boss blind ability. Very dangerous, you know? But $8 is a lot. I think it's evenly costed, but I think it is worse than a lot of the other economy ones. Uh, But not by a ton, but not by a whole ton, I think. Where are we? Hit the road. Gains 0.5 mult per car, discarded jack this round. It's really tough, you know? So you have to build the deck around having a lot of jacks. And yeah, it's tough. It's a tough one. And then you have to discard the jacks also. You know, it, it, it's interesting, but yeah, I, I think it's hard to make good use of here. It doesn't fit 99% of the decks. It's not a good random joker to just pick up. You know what I mean? You don't want to hit this when you skip for a rare, that's for sure. So therefore, yeah, I think it, I think it, mm, I don't think it's quite F. I think it's better than Flower Pot most of the time, at least here. I'll say that much about it. The duo times two molt if played hand contains a pair. Easy to enable. Happens a lot of the times. Pretty decent effect. I'm going to give it a decent B score there, I'm going to say. The trio multiplier times three molt if played hand contains a three of a kind. Definitely worth it for a three of a kind. Definitely better than the duo. Uh decent for endless i think it belongs in the low a's but not by much the family times four if you get a four of a kind now this is where it gets weird so the endless is higher here for this right but how how reliably are you going to be playing at least a four of a kind uh up to anti eight not very obviously it's a stronger effect but it's harder to get going so i think it's a little bit below the others it's kind of like a question of how how likely consider this tier list how much you want to run into these jokers as you're playing right and this is the order i think we can say so i think that that sounds pretty fair honestly to me for that the order times three multiplier played hand contains a straight because straights are rough you know i don't think this is going to be very good does it belong in f maybe not quite f but it it practically should be madness is king of the f's you know the tribe times two multi if played hand contains a flush flushes tend to happen more easily but times two is probably fair 
You know, because flushes are played so often, I think, here. But you probably end up picking this up fairly frequently. Times two just isn't a ton. Hmm. Hmm. The thing is, you're not always playing a flush deck, whereas pairs are probably happening more often. Would I rather run into that family? I don't think so. Leave it in B. Do I leave it in B? Is it that bad? It's not bad. I mean, B is good. B is still good. B is good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stuntman. Plus 300 chips, minus two hand size. Yo, this thing will carry you through practically any difficulty real hard. Because the 300 chips and you don't got to do anything, you know? You can just play a high card and just go for a lot of other molt. You know what I mean? I think it deserves S tier, honestly. Because it lets you just kind of um, ignore a lot of the other factors of the game. I think it's surprisingly strong there. Invisible Joker, after three grand, sell this card to duplicate a random Joker. Obviously, super powerful effect. Cost you time, cost you a Joker slot. Huge endless potential there. But does it help you win anti-8? Sometimes. Sometimes. Therefore, I think it belongs in A. Um. Uh, again, huge endless potential. How much do you how much do you want to run into it? I guess you do want to run into it. I'm going to give it a low S. I think you do want to run into it even on a regular run, right? Brainstorm copies the ability leftmost Joker. Crazy. You know, just like Blueprint. Crazy good. Uh, I think Blueprint, I guess, is slightly better than it. You know, but you can actually use them on each other anyway. You know, so you can have Blueprint to the left of Brainstorm and it doubles it, you know. It just works, you know. Satellite. Earn $1 at the end of round per unique planet card used this run. Eh, it's okay. Like, the, the highest potential is, is it 11 or $12 from this? That's if you play the secret hands and get planet cards from it. It's, I think it's worse than a lot of the other economy jokers. This is the way I feel about it, you know? You need some economy in this game. I just don't think that's a, an amazing one, you know? Shoot the moon, plus 13 molt for each queen held in hand when you play your hand. Um, so surprisingly good, because I think 13 is actually quite high for this. I think it's surprisingly okay. So when it comes to those early jokers, I think I would like to run into it a lot of the times here, you know, and then you just don't play the queen. So I think it's good early. Obviously, it's terrible later on, but I think in the early game, it has its uses, and I don't mind running into it. Driver's License, times three, bolt, if you have at least 16 enhanced cards in your full deck. So a little bit of... Endless potential, but not much, honestly. Not much. This one's really hard, because I think by anti-8, this is almost never going to be up, right? This is almost never going to be up. So it really only has endless uses most of the time, I'm going to say. And otherwise, it has, like, no uses, you know what I mean? So I think it actually belongs in F. If it doesn't help you win anti-8, it's not a very good card, right? It's not a very good card. That's the way I'm looking at it. Card of Master, create a tarot card when blind is selected. One tarot card, one round. You know, easy B tier, probably a pretty high B tier even. You know, I think I would probably end up taking that pretty often. Astronomer, all planet cards and celestial packs in the shop are free. Weirdly, not very good. You know what I mean? Um, surprisingly, not as good as it sounds. Because you'd probably just rather have the uh, other economies. I mean, the shops are just too random for that. And if you have a lot of money to be able to reroll the shop, the all have planet cards, then you don't need this Joker also. You know what I mean? Um, so I think it winds up being pretty bad. Um, yeah, I think it, I think it's pretty, pretty lousy. I'm going to put it somewhere around there in the Ds. You know what I'm saying? Burnt Joker, upgrade the level of the first discarded poker hand each round. It's pretty good. Pretty good. You know, the thing is, you probably got to stick to like an easy hand, like pairs or high card. But this is a Joker that kind of enables them a little bit. I think it's a B. I think you hold on to it pretty often. Um, yeah, somewhere around there. I think it's pretty good. It's okay. I think it's okay. Bootstraps, plus two molts for every five dollars you have. Pretty bad. If you have that much money, you can probably get better jokers pretty quickly. If you have enough money where this is, is making a difference, you're probably replacing this very, very shortly with another joker. So I think most of the times when you run into this thing, you just don't want it. I think I'd take it more often than Flower Pot, maybe Astronomer. I don't know about hit the road kind of hard to say there all right we're on the final stretch the lead joe dairies you can probably guess where most of these are going to end up going canio gains times one molt when a face card is destroyed huge endless potential as we know destroying face cards so you can use training card to destroy them you can use hanged man you can break them with glass 
those are basically it maybe immolate right um so it could be tough but you get a lot you know it's not so if you just destroy like a couple you're getting some good value out of it i think i do think it's s tier worthy then for that but it's probably one one of the rougher ones if you're just trying to get use out of uh winning anti-8 for it right i think so um tribula play kings and queens each give times two multiple score insane even in anti-8 just winning anti-8 insane absolute insanity and of course huge endless possibilities massive it's one of the one of the biggies you know i think you just you want that anytime and all the time it doesn't matter where your deck is you're gonna shift for tribula you know what i mean yorick times five mult only after using 23 discards so you don't need to enable it as much as the others but it's not that 23 discards is too much um it's just that by the time you get this going on um it's pretty late and it's it's not good for endless weirdly but it's fine i mean compared to the other legendaries i think i'd rather have canio but i think it belongs in s tier still it might be an a to be honest chico disables effect of every boss blind oh i mean i recognize that i kind of need this legendary a lot of times right but it's just it's probably the disappointing one out of all of them right because it just doesn't have a big sweeping effect on your deck i think it probably belongs in a because you're probably not getting rid of it unless you go into endless um so you're happy to get a legendary but you're not as happy to get this legendary is what i would say don't worry cavendish gets to stay above it perkio creates a negative copy of one random consumable card in your possession at the end of the shop kind of a confusing effect here but it's absolutely amazing so you need to keep a consumable card could be a planet card could be a tarot card could be a spectral card even too and you hold on to it and it'll create a negative copy when you leave the shop uh so you can use it right afterwards potentially negative copy means that it doesn't take up a slot and you can brainstorm and blueprint this to get multiple negative copies and you can duplicate that over and over and over again and just get insane amounts of stuff you know what i mean um this would be way worse if it was at the end of a round so in other words you had to line it up perfectly so that when you're finishing a round it's going to duplicate something so it'd be it would make brainstorming it worse basically is what i'm saying but this enables crazy endless possibilities but also lets you duplicate tarot cards spectral cards crazy stuff that's going to let you oops uh manipulate your deck and really form it to how you want so i really want this joker uh pretty much all the time i don't think it's better than tribula um but yeah i think it's really high up there uh just don't die with it you know because that'll feel bad and but there you go that is all of the jokers that's all of them baby i know it's uh teeny tiny but uh we did it we finally did it all right that's my joker tier list do you agree dis disagree let me know tell me in the comments if you got anything i mean i'll let you know if i have any changes or if you all convince me that something's better than another one maybe but yeah i'm pretty happy with the result and if you want more bellatra content like comment subscribe you guys know the deal you know it's the youtube you know what i'm saying anyway thanks for watching i'll see you in the next video